Hi everyone, this is Takatoshi Shibayama, the host of the Future Design Podcast. This podcast looks to empower listeners with perspectives on how we can challenge the social norm involved with better understanding of philosophy, spirituality, and ethics. Empower individuals can have much stronger voice and influence in bringing about revolutionary changes in the world, whether you're building businesses or technologies. My guests and I speak about social constructs that are commonly accepted in the world today that's not working anymore, and how to rebuild them with ethical values to create a better future. In this episode, I speak with Wajid Hassan, the author of The Struggle for World Sanity, rooted in theories from the Aetherius Society. He brings his view on how to claim back sanity to the world. For those who are cynical about theories lacking scientific evidence, I appreciate your views and respect them. However, much of this world is mysterious and science is just plain catch up. I'm agnostic to any views that brings peace and unity for all sentient beings and I found Wajit's very thought provoking. Let's face it, the world is insane and nihilistic with wars, racism, sexism, pollution, and we haven't found anything to bring us together yet. Unless there's an external factor, like UFOs visiting us, as the US government is admitting to, perhaps there's nothing else that can. So without further ado, this is part one of my conversation with Wajid Hassan. Future Design Podcast. Well, thank you very much for being on our show, Wajid Hassan. Uh, let me do that over. Thank you very much for being on our show, Wajid Hassan. Welcome to the Future Design Podcast. It's a pleasure to be on your show, Takasoshi. Thank you so much for inviting me. And pleasure is all mine. So you're, you have a book, and also I wanted to talk about your book. But even before that, uh, we get into the conversations about how we should be looking at sanity uh, in ourselves, the world that we are living in right now. Uh, before I like to go into those topics, my usual questions for all the guests is, who is Wasid Hassan? Well, Wajid Hassan is a uh, is somebody who, um, who who's kind of dedicated my life to to humanity and to be of service. And one of the um, uh, I've been a, a speaker, I've been a healer, uh, I've been an actor, I've been a teacher. And now you know I'm I'm working towards being an author. But um, the the author part is is my labor of love because. You know, you talked about the before the even before our interview, we talked about the conditions of the world. And let's face it, uh, Takatoshi, um, you know, on top of the uh, you know uh, COVID, we have a situation in this world which is not too pleasant to look at. We have endless wars. We have you know hatred between races. We have hatred between religions. We have a political system. Um, that just clashes with the left and the right. Uh, we have pollution. We have a, an economic um, uh, policy worldwide, globally, that favors uh, a minority that, that are getting becoming extremely rich, while a, a lot of people are in kind of slave labor. So the reason uh, why um, I actually wrote the book was was that. People can get into apathy, they can get into negativity, they can get into fear, depression, anxiety, and that's prevalent right now around the planet. And so my hope is that um, uh, that the book will open up, uh, give, give people a, a sense of um, inspiration, a sense of hope, a beacon in the darkness uh, to say that the conditions that are on the earth right now are not going to last forever and that there is going to be an, a bright new dawn that will, not might, that will uh, occur on planet Earth in the not too distant future, probably in the next couple of centuries. So that's the, that's the main purpose of, of, of my message uh, to your listeners tonight. Yes, we'll love to dig into all that. And before we just go into the content of your book and your message out there, uh, could you tell us a little bit about how you derived to this well how you what took you down to the path to do, think about oh i want to write a book i want to talk about the how the conditions of the world today how to revamp our minds you know our soul in order to create a better future well i, I was born in pakistan and uh, my parents moved to england when i was three years old and i was raised in england uh in the north of england till till the age of um 
10 and then we, mo- we moved to London. I went to high school in England. And then from there, I, I got a formal education in the technical field as a field service engineer, then moved to America and lived in Los Angeles uh, for over 30 years and now currently residing uh, in uh, North Carolina, uh, USA. Um, at the age of 16, I, you know, I was raised as a Muslim. I went to uh, uh, the mosque, I read the Quran, I did the Arabic prayers. At the same time, I was also uh, got a formal education uh, going to Church of England schools where there was Bible study, uh, Christian hymns, Christian carols. And so I got the best of both worlds uh, in Islam and Christianity, and I didn't really see uh, any major difference in the two ideologies, they were just two different paths going to the same divine principle. And then at the age of 16 was when I met my own yogi master, Dr. George King. Uh, and from there, uh, I decided to follow him over 40 years uh, ago. And and uh, his, his teachings uh, um, and the philosophies that he propounded uh, not only... Um, about life on this earth, but also life on different planes of existence, different, uh, diff- even different planets, uh, and the and the cosmic message that he relayed through his uh, organization, uh, the Ethereum Society. So I've been studying healing and metaphysics and New Age philosophy for at least over forty years. And what made you become so religious or spiritual in general? Because my upbringing, maybe it's in a different time, but, you know, it was pretty much atheist in general. I was never really exposed to religion. And I see this world becoming more and more like that as well, because people want to understand logic. They want to be, everything to be based on science and everything has to be evidence based. And I feel that science is trying to you know, create a logic behind what's mystical about this world. So, you know, science can't completely define everything that we know right now, even with this modern improvement in science, there's a lot of things that we can kind of say it's mystical. And I think we are starting to become so logical minded that we try to disregard all that because it's not based on science, but science, as I said, is still immature. It's still discovering a lot of things. So. I think that, you know, the world should start to kind of look back and say, well, you know, there are magical things that are happening. There's things that can't be uncovered right now with science. What kind of holds you back or what holds you to those kind of religious or spiritual beliefs? And how how did you get into that? Well, I won't say religious beliefs. I believe uh, the religions of the world. Uh, that's why I, I I didn't conform too much to to the, to um, the dogma of, the, of religions. Um, the thing that annoyed me was uh, at the mosque. I would hear that the the Jews and the Christians are condemned to hell, and the Muslims are going to paradise. And I would go to the Christian church, and be told that the Jesus was the only one and only Son of God, and those who don't follow him are condemned to hell. So I I, I went beyond um, the dogma of religions and more into spirituality uh, and metaphysics and uh, and you know again I'm not here to propound any ideologies uh, to your listeners all I'm saying is that people need to keep an open mind and do their own research uh, use their own intuition and make their own uh, uh, you know uh, decisions based on uh, what you may term as a logical conclusion and so um I came to a logical conclusion that the teachings and the master that I followed uh, were real, and uh, he proved himself uh, many, many times over that his that his philosophies were in were in fact a tremendous amount of truth. Because one thing that he said, uh, like before he even went on a platform, he made a solemn vow before his creator that he would always speak the truth. Because he said, if you want to seek the truth. You have to speak the truth. And it cost him a lot of money, cost him a lot of popularity, because truth in these days is considered conspiracy and lies are considered truth. And so we've got it we got it the wrong way around. So the truth seekers are actually are very unpopular because their message uh, is very unpopular. But if you tell uh, untruths just to appease the masses, then then you're popular, you know, um, 
people like celebrities and politicians and you know generals of armies i mean they they get up on the podium and they rally the masses or they rally the their countrymen uh, and they lead them to nothing but uh, chaos and destruction and not only today but in the past if we study our history that's always been the case so that has to change right now absolutely I feel like in a sense that the world has been improving in many ways in terms of sanity or you know ethics and and spirituality in general because we had a lot more wars before we had a lot more racism back then and I think it's slowly improving over time but now I feel that there's a sense of nihilism you know there's a sense that people don't really care anymore and they just accept it as as the way it is and it's also kind of like mocking it almost and that's why I really worry about the the future of our world because with this nihilism in place there's no way to like say well you know let's let's get our sanity back and 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 drive this to a better place people almost kind of said you know they're just kind of giving up on it so why do you think we kind of entered in this space because this is a really you know critical moment that we can't fall into this nihilism completely because then, then there's no way back anymore well people are burnt out they're tired of you know um they're tired of looking at the media the media just says you know if it bleeds it leads and it just continues to shed you know uh, news about blood and murder and violence and people are, are being hypnotized and molded over over the centuries with this conditioning which is which is specially planned i, I believe uh, to hold the people in fear uh, and then once you have people in fear it's very easy to divide and conquer and that's exactly what's what's happening this the scenes there's people behind the scenes that control uh what's going on and of course yeah uh that you know the young younger generation they they just they they detach they get into video games into drugs alcohol whatever uh just to you know just to um detach their minds um i i also agree with you uh takatoshi that there has been a, cha- a, a, a a change for the better and there's two aspects of that which i want to tell your listeners about first of all whether you believe in astrology or not it doesn't really matter but the the mayan calendar we're still influenced by the planets um the mayan calendar finished in in 2012 and uh, at that time people thought it was going to be the end of the world uh, actually it was the beginning of something great people have talked talking about the great reset or the great change and one aspect of that is that um we're now in astrologically in what's called the aquarian age and astrologically the planets are pushing uh, mankind to raise his vibrations to up you know to be of service to each other and and we we've seen we've seen that happening and that's one aspect of what's what's going on with the aquarian age another aspect which the media doesn't talk about is the fact that this planet of ours the indigenous tribes have known for centuries that this planet is not just a piece of rock it's actually a beautiful cosmic goddess which we refer to as the mother earth and she's been asked by higher forces to raise her vibration so her vibrations are also uh raising every year she's releasing energies and that's of actually affecting the the climate change it's not don't believe that that climate change is a result of carbon emissions that's just a small part of it but the ice caps melting and the change in the weather is a result of the ionosphere slowly being um diminished which is increasing the ultraviolet rays and the cosmic rays coming to earth which is beneficial for earth and that's also another reason why we need to raise our vibrations is to conform with her and the and the astrological influence of the aquarian age I heard that we're in this horocene period of earth where it had very stable climates for about 14,000 years and this is just only a small blip or a small period in earth with rapid changes that have been happening over billions of years and why do you think that the minds kind of discarded it or how do you come to believe that the earth is raising its vibrations well um it- 
again, I have to come come back to my own spiritual master. Um, just a quick background on him. He was he was an Englishman. He was a section leader for the London Fire Brigade during the Nazi Blitz uh, in World War Two, and he had the terrible task of uh, search and rescue, where he had to pick up pieces of little children. It really affected him while this suffering, and then with recollections from his past. After the war, he he decided to take a serious uh, uh, study into yoga, not only hatha yoga but pranayama yoga, the yoga breathing exercises, mantra yoga, um, where he got to the point where he was actually um, practicing yoga for eight to ten hours a day on top of his normal job, which at that time was a London cab driver, and he did that for for ten years till he reached. Uh, very deep states of uh, meditation, people call them samadhi or nirvana, cosmic consciousness, where he raised his consciousness to the point where he could levitate, he could go through walls, he, he, his, his, his whole uh, physical body completely changed. And it was at that time that he was actually contacted by uh, beings that, that are not of this world, that man these spacecraft, which people have referred to as UFOs, and he was contacted uh, by them and and became a channel for their messages uh, over 600 of them uh, he would he would go into the high state of samadhi and would actually um re- receive uh, mental impulses from these beings which he would translate through his larynx into english and there's been over 600 transmissions uh, which which have guided mankind on what needs to be done uh, in order to make things right on this world. And one aspect uh, of the Mother Earth rising was that in 1964, uh, the, the cosmic, uh, we refer them to as the cosmic masters, actually surround, surrounded the Earth and, and sent tremendous amount of energies to her, which was the called the primary initiation of Earth, uh, which occurred in July, on July the 8th, 1964. And she, at the time, had the uh, had the opportunity to actually release those energies completely, which have, which have, which have destroyed civilization. So, in mercy, she's decided to do that slowly, and that's uh, an aspect again, which is uh, an aspect of truth, which I feel people need to understand again, which the media has not even talked about, and so. Um, that's the reason why she's actually raising her vibrations every year to the point where over the centuries uh, people who can't, who won't be able to, uh, you know, take these high spiritual vibrations w- won't be able to live on this earth. They will probably be, have to go maybe to another uh, planet in the solar system, but they won't be able to. And only those who raise their vibrations will be able to stay on this earth and that's the reality of what's going on right now wow this is that's something completely new to me so in 1964 we were supposed to just die you know all the civilization was supposed to disappear because of this you know rising vibrations of the of the earth i mean how how do these people and and you were talking about you know space creatures or or people alien to us uh, reaching out to your your you know, yoga master talking about these facts or, or evidence that's ha- that's going to happen to to the earth. I mean, how how did he really get into contact with these people? And I'm really curious to know, like, where these people come from. I mean, there's there's a lot of um, you know, I guess a lot of stories that I've read about as well that you know must if everybody's talking about something similar about that, then there must be some truth to it. So I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Well, you know, in uh, if you ever studied Hindu and uh, Buddhist philosophies, we know that there are realms of existence uh, below us and realms of existence uh, above us. Um, you know, when we die, we go to these realms and then we live there for a little while, then we come back. I mean, let's face it, reincarnation is a fact. Again, uh, that's one of the one of the teachings that the cosmic masters told Dr. King that has to be reinstated on planet Earth right now. Um, some Christian scholars recently came forward and said that reincarnation was actually taught in the Christian church. It was taken out 
a, a few hundred years ago just so that people would have this uh, one life to live and that control and that's turning people off uh, from the, from dogmatic religions they they they're tired of the lies not the religion themselves but the lies of the elders who 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 are controlling the masses uh, through through this control and so um most people uh, unless you're a psychic you won't be able to know that these realms exist uh, unless a, a medium can actually contact people who've passed away so dr king was able to project from as a yogi master was able to project from his body and visit these realms and he said there was four realms below us called the lower astral realms and six levels above us now uh it's he wrote a book in 19 in the 50s called you are responsible where he talked about projecting to other planets in this solar system and conversing with advanced civilizations now logically speaking uh, and i would agree with the scientists that if you went to mars or venus or jupiter or saturn in a physical body the the the, the possibility of existence of life would be minimum because of the adverse weather conditions on these planets but he projected to uh, level 4 and 5 and said that uh, on those higher realms were advanced civilizations not only scientifically millions of years advanced than us were also spiritually and and those are the people who man these spacecraft who are actually uh monitoring this earth right now who who are actually have a concern not only for one particular race but for the whole race and so what he said was every planet apart from mercury in this solar system is inhabited by higher sentient beings uh, and again you know we look at technology um i mean quantum physics now it, you know based on their calculations are accepting the reality of parallel universes uh, different dimensions so as technology increases i think the um the people be, will be able to understand that that the possibility of life on different dimensions is real and that's where these masters are they can actually come onto the physical realm and go, and go back to the higher higher mental realms where they, where they reside but we can't unless we raise our vibrations like dr king did we can't reach out to them uh he said that you could be on mars for 200 years and not even detect an advanced civilization unless they they contacted you and so these are the beings that actually are uh um and 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 what's really interesting is when he was contacted in the 50s that's when um uh you know we decided to start exploding the atom and hydrogen bombs and it was known by the beings these space beings that the mother earth was was due to die in the 50s and 60s because of this uh, terrible uh, re- release of radiation around the planet and they actually intervened on, on her behalf and now on our, our our behalf and scientifically absorbed a lot of the fallout which actually saved us uh, from annihilation back in the 50s and 60s wow that's massive res- revelation there and, uh, and and so you know when you talk about these um uh, aliens coming in you know flying saucers and all these things i mean if they're living in a different dimension and they're more in a conscious un, like a consciousness level i mean why do they need physical flying saucers to even visit us can't they just reach us to our you know kind of subconscious mind and talk to us cuz you know for them i guess physical material is not really of an of an essence right so it's more about you know connecting to us spiritually that's a very very good uh, question because they can do both they can project from their bodies and 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 come amongst us um uh the reason they use uh vessels is is some of them are some of the vessels are actually scientifically extremely advanced uh, uh craft that they use uh, for the benefit of mankind and dr king wrote a book um again in the 60s called the nine freedoms and in the nine freedoms uh he talked about the true history of mankind but he, he and and also the evolutionary cycle of mankind for the next many, maybe million years that were trans transmitted to him by these advanced beings and in that book he he projected to a 
uh, spacecraft which was actually in orbit of, 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 of Earth at that time uh, by the name of Satellite Number 3. Now he said that this spacecraft was a mile and a half long and it comes periodically. Uh, it, it has a cloak of invisibility based on their technology because they don't want radar part particles to be, to be interfering with their complex manipulations which they carry on. And he saw firsthand extremely advanced uh, radionic computerized systems which they said would, would defy the imagination of the greatest scientists on this planet. And just looking at basic Earth technology uh, today uh, with a global positioning satellite, we can pinpoint anybody on, on the planet with um, a, a cell phone. So that's just basic. Now, if you amplify that to millions of years advance, uh, these beings um, have the capability uh, of... Uh, another transmission came through Dr. King that they have a complete vibrational sequence pattern of every man, woman, child, rock, animal, fish on this planet on their computerized on their computer computer systems. Now the question is why do they have this dossier? Because they say we know you from the past, we know you from the present and we know we know your future. What they do when they come into orbit of this of this earth is that they we can actually contact them. Uh, they, they say, I think the the, the speed of um, thought through through our body goes it's like six hundred miles per per hour, but in free space, the speed of thought is uh, over four million times the speed of light, and so we're actually online with these uh, cosmic masters, and so what we can do is just by thinking of them we can we can draw a uh, spiritual energy which comes from the earth as pranic spiritual power the power of love and we can actually channel this down uh, through us through our brain over the shoulder to our heart center and through the palms of the hand and actually send it out as a white light uh, as, as an, a, a very tangible energy one thing that your listeners can do is that they can stand in front of a mirror and they can visualize white light going to the mirror it will reflect back and you'll feel a tingling around your aura or around your fingers so this is an actual tangible energy and what they're saying is this part of this great change this great rise is that spiritual power it, it, it operates on a on a energy on a octave you know much higher than electricity we can't see electricity but we we will know exactly what electric electricity does and it's the same with spiritual power spiritual energy dr king said that the only energy crisis that's that's happening on this planet right now is a spiritual energy crisis we're spiritual beings in a physical body we've lost the ability to channel this energy through our higher higher uh, centers and what they're doing is they can beam down energies individually to any live stream or even a hundred million people at, at the time i mean this is technology this is they say that that uh, you know that truth is stranger than fiction and this is something which eventually people will realize but again don't take my word for it the listeners all you have to do is when is just think of this power when this uh, in fact the spacecraft is actually will be in orbit between July the 5th and August August the 5th of this year and uh, when you know and you can actually send this energy regardless of any of your spiritual beliefs you can even be an atheist um, you you know you don't even have to believe in God all you have to do is is have this desire to help to serve and the energy will be sent to you and that's one of the main uh, uh, reasons that these cosmic masters are in the skies above us the, there's a lot of conspiracy about fear and abduction and you know all this business about you know them them being uh, evil um, Dr. King asked them at one time they said he asked him he said how long would it take for you to take over the planet they said between 10 and 15 minutes yeah, if they have those kind of advanced technologies, I mean, I'm, no, I'm sure they could. I mean, maybe you could do it even quicker than that. But uh, but the thing is, obviously, human beings, if they for the unknown, they always fear it. 
and it's it's quite normal right so they think alien beings never seen them you know th if they can come here then obviously they have much more advanced technology than we than us so they can just wipe us out instantly but at the same time if they're so advanced i'm sure they've figured out a way to live in harmony and pe live peacefully and and be kind to each other i mean that's also cuz if you can't you can't amass the, all these knowledges of all the people that take us to different solar systems or different consciousness because that's a collective effort by everybody on on wherever the the realm that they're living in you can't do that on a fractionalized basis and i feel that you know the human beings too you know once we can get on board and be together and be you know thinking about how to advance our society our civilization that's only what that's the only time that we can actually send people to let's say mars or different planets of the wor world because we have the peacefulness at home that you can think about sending people somewhere else outside of this uh, earth right and so if they're coming to us i think they must be peaceful people but at the same time we still don't know that <laughs> so for us i mean we're so premature we're still killing each other and and call you know being racist and bigotry and all these things we're so premature and we're kind of in a way destroying this earth as well we're polluting it you know we're we're getting rid of all the nature around us killing all the animals around us we're domesticating animals for our own purposes how can we actually even get better than this? Because, you know, even if they do come to us, we still have to believe in that, right? We have to not fear it and embrace it. So how, how do we even progress as our minds are still kind of stuck in this monkey level mind? Well, uh, you made an interesting point about, about their, their existence, their civilizations. And they've said that on their, on their higher, higher levels of existence, that there are no wars. There's, there's not even any graveyards and 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 you're right and and they have ascended bodies that they live in that can that can they are ageless and they can live to in the same body for like 25,000 years i mean old age is a disease on this planet and what they're saying is we've actually regressed we at one time we were actually very advanced um, beings and we've regressed and 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 you know it, it, if you go, just go to the basic law of karma, or, or scientifically speaking, the action reaction is opposite and equal. Uh, you know we're responsible for all the conditions on on the planet. We can't blame uh, the cosmic masters. We can't blame God. We can't blame higher higher beings. We cannot. We've only ourselves to blame. And um, Dr. King again, uh, you know, he had the ability to look at look at you he could read your aura and, and in your aura he could read the uh, exact history of your past life your present life and in, in your future he in my book he i talk about past life that he saw uh, uh in me when he when he looked at my aura at the same time our planet also has an aura and he was able to project from his body and read the aura of the planet people have talked to about that called the akashic records and there in in color three-dimensional sequence he could read the whole history of this planet and he, he wrote that in the nine freedoms i'll quickly go over it so we actually uh lived on this uh uh planet uh which orbited between um mars and jupiter by the name of maldek over 18 million years ago and Dr. King described uh, that civilization or our previous civilization as being extremely advanced technology. The robots took care of all menial tasks on the planet. We could control the weather. Um, uh, we had an abundance of food. The, the Bible talks about Adam and Eve and the fall from the Garden of Eve and Eden, Eden. And that's just a fairy tale. Tale, but it has some. It has a a lot to do uh, with our fall and. Again, some of the scientists, uh, the disease struck for this lust for power and greed, and they invented a, a, a hydrogen bomb, which was 10,000 times more powerful than the one that we use on Earth today, and completely destroyed the planet Maldek. All that's left of that now is uh, the asteroid belt, which scientists are now saying that that, uh, that that was a planet that exploded millions of years ago. So when we were released on our different planes of existence we had to reincarnate on another planet to continue our evolutionary cycle and the planet earth she was asked if if she would impose limitation and allow 
us to be born on her, which she agreed to do. And so, you know, as radio, radioactive mutants, we eventually uh, reached a stage of evolution where where we another race, as a civilization, grew called Lemuria. And the Lemuria, again, was a more, very advanced uh, spiritually, scientifically uh, civilization than we have today. And again, that was destroyed in an atomic war. And then thousands of years later, another civilization by the name of Atlantis uh, came along. And in some of the ancient Vedic uh, texts, which are like go back 20,000 years ago in the Mahabharata, they talk about flying, um, um, you know, discs in the skies and beams, uh, uh, you know, which were wars of energy beams. And and what Dr. King said that one side invented a, a controllable atomic ray called Indra's dart, and another side invented an atom bomb which they called Brahma weapon or weapon of God. And and down when Atlantis, the Earth flipped on her axis, and down came the civilization of Atlantis. And then again for, for the um, fourth time in our history we're back into this holocaust where we can at this point uh, uh, create global war and completely destroy our civilization and so um, the the cosmic masters have decreed that the earth herself will not be destroyed or harmed and so we can go ahead and do that but if we do then we will again will be released through death and we will actually go to another uh, planet in in this solar system. There, it's on the other side of the solar system. Scientists have referred it to as Planet X because um, it has a certain pull from uh, uh, Uranus and Neptune. So they know it's there. They've cal- calculated it to be about ten times the size of Earth. And so, with this spiritual um, rise. We're, we're actually, this is the begin, beginning of the end of mankind. Now we have to decide whether either we stay on this earth to create this new uh, age which is coming where there will be no wars, there will be no borders, there will be no races, there will be no economic system. There will be a, a glorious future for us which has been seen by not only my master but other masters in the past. Or uh, we can go ahead and reincarnate on this younger planet and, and again relive the uh, the terrible history that we created over 18 million years ago. And I know what I'm saying is probably going to floor your listeners, but again, I, I say, you know, research um, my master's organization, the Ethereum Society. Um, they can go to the website, ethereus.org, A-E-T-H-E-R-I-U-S dot O-R-G, and do the study for themselves listen to these transmissions themselves and make their own conclusions. But, um, you know, in the past we had people that said that the earth was flat till somebody turned around and said, no, the earth is round and they were talked and they said they were heretics. And then other people said that the, uh, the sun revolved around the earth when other astronomers said, no, the earth revolves around the sun. And again, they were considered as heretics. So people spiritual pioneers of, 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 or scientific even scientific pioneers have always been misunderstood and laughed at and Dr. King when he talked about life on other planets when he talked about these spacecraft uh, was laughed at and now uh, you know when I talk about it people are not laughing at me they're actually very open minded about it because science has, uh, has evolved to the point where you know people like the governments, uh, the, the people who manned these spacecraft, one of the communications that came through, we were talking about this earlier, they said that flying saucers are real, flying saucers are friendly, your government knows this. So the governments of this world and NASA, they know all about the existence of these UFOs and these uh, these uh, cosmic masters, but they haven't really openly said that to the public. And our in, our intelligence is being insulted now when they're saying that there's no possibility of life in this solar system and beyond because people are wising up now and they're realizing themselves that no that's just a, a plain lie and we're being manipulated and not being told the truth so that's another aspect of writing the book is to b- reveal these truths which will cause a stir in the minds of people 
but at the same time keep an open mind and and use your intuition yeah i think that we're still not really ready for aliens to come over to our planet and be able to accept them embrace them with open arms because of this unknown factor that we always been kind of you know scared about and i think even the stories that we hear about the atlantis and you know i've i watched those like gaia movies around anukis and all these um you know f- alien sources or f- forces that created us and etc i mean i think that you know in order for us to accept that we're not the only people or living creatures outside of the earth and also the fact that maybe there isn't a god maybe we are the god there's a god inside us we're the divine and we're practicing to bring out the god within us these are things that people still think it's completely alternative and in order for us to even kind of take those steps and trying to make ourselves aware that the there are different you know, life forms out there is a different level of consciousness out there. Obviously, people rely on science and science is not progressed enough to even, you know, shed light onto this. You mentioned about these scientists and uh, about uh, and during this conversation. Now, I don't know the, the sources of these scientists and what, what they, they found, but uh, can't we just release more of this information out and and really kind of educate the public about this without having to just dump it all on them at once, right? Because I think that's what also maybe the government's worried about is that if I if I say that there are alien creatures out, I mean, obviously it's going to ma- create a huge massive blowout in, in all of us. You know, there's going to be people who are wanting them to come. Some people are saying that, you know, they're they're, they're going to kill us. I mean, you know, we're, we're not just ready. And we're just too premature in that sense. And I think that's why we can't even come together and create this peaceful world ourselves. I mean, there's always this kind of blockage. And... I, and this blockage is always going to be the 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 element that we need to kind of fix and but we don't really care about it enough and what can these you know spiritual forces or or people in other dimensions can help us you know get rid of this blockage because i think this is the, the 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 strongest part of of who we are as humans that create and continue to destroy ourselves over and over again yeah, um, we 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 must be masochists because we enjoy suffering, and what Dr. King said of the cosmic master said is we didn't come here to suffer. We we came to this earth as a beautiful classroom. We came to learn to raise our vibr. He said the only reason we're here is to raise our vibrations, and to achieve these high levels of meditation and spirituality to the point where we can actually break the cycle of reincarnation and ascend. And, and join join these higher beings that they, they, they're not saying that they're saying that join us they're not saying that you know we we control you um coming back to you know people ask for a sign from them they, they said well why don't you give us a sign you're right you know we need to create conditions that if they do land or when they do land that we we op- we we you know embrace them openly with gentleness and kindness but if they if they landed openly now more than likely they would probably face a nuclear warhead or somebody would try to destroy them and so uh when the time is right and the and I I I agree with you we need to change the conditions on this planet and they're sending down these beams of energy to us uh, to help raise the 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 next the the next uh revolution is going to be a mental phys- peaceful revolu- revolution and it's through our minds that we can raise the vibrations and and you said you know the god within uh, we're all sparks of that divine and and it doesn't matter who we are but we, we're all sparks of that particular divine and we're all interconnected so if one aspect of the civilization raises it's going to affect the whole uh, uh, civilization so even if uh, a couple of thousand people come together and start sending out the light uh, they're going to make a tremendous difference to this world and it's already started I belong to a group uh, from 50 different countries and we together every day we get together and send out the energy um, on a collective to send out this light and uplift mankind 
so if people are interested in joining us it's free they can just go to uh, the website 12blessings.org, the 12 being numerical. And so if they don't know how to channel this energy, again, they can join us and channel this uh, energy, which is so critical at this time. And, you know, uh, they they love us the way we don't love ourselves because they're so advanced. They look, at, look to us as children, squabbling children, the same way we will look at animal squabble. But we we but we we would care about the animals, and that's exactly the same way. Uh, they see hope in us while we don't see hope in ourselves. Yeah, I think I want to continue discussion. Unfortunately, time has kind of run out for me. So let's do part two of this because I would love to continue this conversation. And um, you know, for now, I think this part part one. I think we can leave it here. There's so much more to talk about, Wajid. Thank you for your time right now, and I'll reschedule another one for us to do part two. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. And if people want to get the book, uh, like you said, it is on Amazon, and it's called The Struggle for World Sanity. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Hi, this is your host, Takatoshi Shibayama. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. Now, if you enjoyed or disliked the show, please let me know by writing in the comment section. The only way I can improve or add value to you is through your voices. If there are any topics that you would like me to pick up, please also let me know in the comments. I'd love to start chatting with you all. And if you would like to continue watching the show, please subscribe. Thank you.